We are keeping an eye on storms tonight out on the Eastern Plains. We have team coverage with our meteorologist Chris Bianchi watching the radar and fellow meteorologist Corey Reppenhagen live out in Lincoln County tonight. Nothing out there tonight like what we saw last night. This is what it looks like this afternoon in the Greeley area. The city says floodwaters reached up to 18 inches in some places, closing roads downtown into East Greeley was hit the hardest. And tonight we learned one person was killed and another seriously hurt in that storm. People started the long process today of cleaning up the flooding inside their homes and their businesses. Nine News reporter Rhea Ja joins us tonight. You spoke with a family that's really getting very familiar with flooding, Rhea. They are, but this was on another level. The couple from Greeley sent me this picture from their home last night. It's only lit up because of the lightning. There is water flooding through their door, and those are their two cars over there half submerged. They said they've lived in the area for years and have never experienced a flood like this. When water started seeping into the Reinbarger's home around 10 o'clock, it was just like every other storm. I was like, well, we're, we got to get this kind of mopped up. And the more we tried to mop it, the, the harder it seemed to just come on in. In a matter of minutes. And the water started gushing in faster and it was like water falling down the stairs. They realized nothing was going to stop the flooding. And all I cared about was making sure that we were all safe. You know, at that point, it doesn't matter what you have. It matters who you have. The fire department came to rescue the family. Standing outside the home that night, it was safe, but surreal. You stood on the road and everything was, you know, your entire property is submerged in water and your cars and you just, it's, it's unbelievable knowing how quick something can come and completely change your life um, in the matter of moments um, really puts things into perspective. The reality of the road ahead set in when they went back the next day. There was six feet of water at one point in time in our basement. So a lot of stuff was underwater. Um, the stuff that could float was floating. Everything in their basement where both of the kids rooms are now ruined. My biggest thing seeing the house today, especially after we got the water in the basement was. God, am I blessed that my children were not sleeping nor were we when this happened. While the Reinbargers now know this storm was not like any other, they know they're not alone. Our hearts go out to everyone because we weren't the only ones affected. We know we are gonna be okay. And we know that we're gonna have good days and we know we're gonna have bad days while we figure this all out, um, but we're gonna do it together. The Reinbargers are now staying with their friends and will be for a while. If their house is deemed to be safe to live in, it will be months until they can go back. And that's only if insurance will cover the cost of damage. They're not too sure about that just yet. If you would like to help them out, we have information in this story that will be on our website. Rhea Ja, 9 News. Wow, something to see. And Chris, it was about this time last night that you, you know, you were sharing the warnings like this, this could be rough tonight in Greeley. Exactly right, Kim and Jenny. And it was around, again, around 9, 9.30 or so. That storm just started to back into Greeley from an unusual direction. Normally our storms, like tonight's, move from west to east. But it was an outflow boundary. That kind of cool breeze you feel on the front end of a summer storm. It was an outflow boundary that crashed into another. And it forced the air to rapidly rise. And it took place right over Greeley. And unfortunately, that spurred that devastating storm that we saw up that way. Also in Greeley, they picked about four inches of rain as a result of that storm in about two hours. And that is a stunning amount of water. And that's why uh, we saw so much uh, devastation out there. Meantime, Eastern Plains, we're still seeing some storms right now. Do a flash flood warning and more on that in just a second, but we're still seeing some showers and storms. These are mostly sub severe. We do have one severe thunderstorm warning though. That would be for Southern parts of Prowers County. That severe thunderstorm warning goes till the bottom of the hour out there in Southern Prowers County for large hail and damage winds. Storms will push east, so over the next hour or so, most of these storms will be out in the Kansas, and we expect things to calm down before another round of storms coming up for our day tomorrow. But tracking those storms tonight out in Lincoln County is meteorologist Corey Reppenhagen. And Corey, how are things looking out there? I know you're not too far away from a flash flood warning out there on the eastern plains. Yeah, that's exactly right, Chris. I'm wa still watching a few thunderstorms here in the area. No severe warnings. It looks like the severe threat has diminished for tonight. But for the second night in a row, a, a spot in northeast Colorado got hailed up by ping pong ball size hail and excessive rain 
The only difference is today it happened in the daylight hours and it happened in the much less populated area of northern Lincoln County. Now take a look at this video that I shot out here. You talked about that flash flood warning. It is still in effect for this area to the north of Lyman, Genoa, Araba. This is the spot where it where we got three inches of rain. So almost as much as they got in Greeley last night. Roadways were really washed out. As you can see, some of those uh, those currents coming over the road there. And also the hail was another issue out here. We had lots of places with accumulating hail, making it very difficult to get around. And I found a few spots that had some pockets of uh, ping pong ball size hail. So again, just like last night, we had uh, that, that really large hail in those severe thunderstorms. That seemed to be the biggest area in northeast Colorado that got hit tonight. Of course, we had those storms down in the southeast part of the state as well, but it seems like North Lincoln County, where that flash flood warning is still in place, is the hardest hit tonight as these storms are pushing out of the state now in non-severe fashion, but we will reload again for tomorrow as that severe weather threat builds across northeast Colorado once again. Reporting in Genoa, meteorologist Corey Reppenhagen, 9 News. Thank you, Corey. Yeah, different part, a little bit further east and north, but uh, this is that time of the year. So remember, you can stay up to date on the weather forecast. Just download the 9 News app. It's free to download in the Apple and Google Play stores. Commerce City Police say a man's silver chain saved his life. They say he was arguing with someone yesterday when that person shot him. But instead of hitting his neck, the bullet hit his chain, and he only suffered a puncture wound. Police say officers arrested the person who shot the man, and that person's now facing charges for attempted homicide. Drive I-70, and you know where it is, by the smell. The stench in North Denver is decades old, and now the center of a new class action lawsuit. Two people who live near the Perina pet food plant filed a federal lawsuit today against the company. They claim to represent 2,000 households that have been subjected to the smell. They argue that Nestle Perina, Perina, Perina rather, has not done enough to mitigate the odor. They're hoping to get a judge to declare the plant a nuisance and get damages. Now, Perina told Nine News investigates, quote, we've operated our York Street factory since 1930. Throughout that time, we've remained committed to being the best neighbor we can be, and that won't change. Unfortunately, we cannot comment on the specifics of pending litigation. There's a class so popular in Denver Public Schools that students have to wait to get in. And it's not just kids, but adults getting an education. Nine News reporter Rachel Krause joins us live in the studio with the growing demand now, Rachel, for a Spanish GED program. Yeah, guys, DPS operates GED courses in Spanish at a number of community hubs around the metro area. The hubs say they get calls every day from people ready to sign up and take these classes, and they're full, sometimes months in advance. The students who do get in say it's helping set them up for success. Siempre va a ser el eje de nuestras X. Inside DPS's far northeast community hubs. ¿Para dónde se va a ir? La derecha. A different kind of class is in session. Nuestra allí. Here, adults come to learn math and everything else they'll need to pass their GED. Dos y para arriba. All in Spanish. Through these lessons, this class has become a community. Somos un grupo muy unido y me encantó llegar aquí porque Y cuando alguien logra algo, nos da mucho gusto a todos. O sea, si alguien llega y dice, hey, ya pasé un examen, eh, nos da mucho re gusto a todos porque todos estamos en el mismo, en el mismo canal. Esta es aquí. Mireya Villalobos is taking classes here. She knows the GED opens up more opportunities for better jobs. Es que anteriormente sí estuve estudiando, nomás que la escuela era eh, fraudulenta. Entonces, pues no nos dieron nuestro certificado. Now, studying here with DPS, taking these classes in Spanish, her dream of becoming a medical assistant feels so possible. Pues significa mucho porque como el idioma no, o sea, no lo domino bien y es excelente que, que las tengan en español porque pues 
les entiendo más. ¿Qué es lo que tenemos que hacer? At the front of the class, Fabiola Flores teaches students how to plot coordinates. Flores jumped in to help as demand for Spanish GED classes surged. Classes here are always full and wait lists stretch long. Flores isn't surprised. Exactamente, siento que es una oportunidad para ellos. Siento que la gente no debe de estar este, olvidada. Por ser un programa en español, siento que hay esa oportunidad para ellos, para que puedan en un futuro poder realizar a lo mejor un sueño que dejaron olvidado. Many students here are new to country. Others have called Denver home for years. Flora says teaching all her students what they need to graduate and succeed here is a feeling like no other. Yo siento una emoción, prácticamente no la puedo describir, es una emoción personal que yo siento que estoy poniendo un granito de arena en cada uno de ellos. Y al momento que ellos me, di me dicen, ya pasé el examen, yo siento que estoy pudiendo hacer algo por ellos. Me siento realmente realizada. Yeah, Lobo says her coworkers tell her she's too old, that she can't do this. But with two exams passed and two more to go, she's ready to prove them wrong with her GED now within her reach. A lo mejor ahorita ya de grande ya se me concede el sueño ya mayor porque ya voy a cumplir 49 años. Pero no importa, o sea, es algo que quiero traer. 48 people will graduate with their Spanish GED next week. Many are parents of DPS students themselves. And DPS says right now there's a wait list of about 120 people hoping to soon join a Spanish GED class. Rachel Krause, 9 News.